Hi everyone, Sandman here. Today's video is brought to you by a donation from Ozzy H, and here's what he has to say. Hey mate, I'm a 29 year old Australian, and I've been noticing some distinct things about women in so-called caring professions. These professions are often the health sciences, nursing, and so on. For some context, I've been involved in healthcare in some form or another for the last 10 years, so I have a diverse perspective on the industry that is largely female-dominated. My observation is this. Women have little or almost no ability to be empathetic for ill or vulnerable people. It's all a facade that they put off to give on the impression that they actually care about the people that they're assigned to. They also show distinct preference for female patients and disdain or revulsion for the male ones. Recently I saw a nurse removing a suction tube from a male patient's GI tract and she gave him no warning as she pulled it out, or even provided him any comfort after the removal. This is a tube that goes through the mouth, through the upper sinuses, and down the throat. I see this time and time again. They do not even feign compassion or empathy for the difficult patients. I cannot count how many times I've had to deal with this so-called aggressive psycho because they did not have the ability to talk to an accurately delirious person. A colleague of my best friend called female nurses in the psych ward professional door holders because that's all they did when a patient became violent and expected the male staff to take care of them instead. So I would appreciate if you did a video on women having to rely on their male counterparts to do their job for them or the jobs that they feel are beneath them. If you can relate an anecdote of your own, then that would be awesome. Keep up the good work, and I'll basically make other requests later. Regards, Ozzy H. Well, Ozzy H, thanks for your donation as well as your topic request. I think you hit the nail on the head when you said that it always seems to be the males in psychiatric wards taking care of aggressive patients. In the movies, you often see a female nurse freak out, and then she ends up calling for help, and it's often men that actually have to take down the violent patients while the nurses hide behind the glass curtain walls. I never really thought of that before, so thanks for pointing it out. As far as I can see, nursing is a relatively easy job because rarely is there actually any heavy lifting, and what you're doing for the most of the time is actually babysitting sick people. Plus, as a nurse, you get to practice your hypergamy game on men. Ozzy H, I'm also sure that you've probably met many doctors that have been victims of the hypergamous nurse. They married them for their money and then took them to the cleaners. I too have seen this in my own life. But this isn't the only so-called compassionate or caring job that women take to be close to their high-status males. You also have flight attendants doing the same damn thing, trying to jump into the arms of a pilot or into his cockpit. I've met women that were flight attendants trying desperately to land a pilot, no pun intended. This too is another relatively easy job next to a pool of rich male professionals. The flight attendants I've spoken to in the past always seem to complain that the pilots wanted to sleep with them, but didn't actually want to date them or marry them. So that was their constant frustration. Another profession where you see this a lot is also with regards to legal or business secretaries. You also see this with political interns or even teaching assistants for professors. Women try and weasel their way into becoming the helpers of men that they're trying to land. I've actually met many waitresses trying to get close to male bartenders and nightclub owners. There are dozens of industries where low-rank women work for higher-ranking men, and they're trying to get their attention by shaking their tail feathers. Yes, they're there for the job security, especially in fields such as nursing and law, but their goal is to land that doctor, a bar owner, or even a pilot. Why do you think so many women work in travel, tourism, and hospitality? They're waiting for a wealthy traveler to save them from the drudgery of their daily job. Men that can also afford to travel or have their company send them all over the world on business trips are also perfect targets because they have great jobs. We all know that women put themselves in places where they have access to men that are of higher status. The doctors come first and the patients come second. Recently there was a poll done on dating sites and women were the most attracted to men that were actually pilots. I wonder if that can have something to do with their $120,000 a year salaries or perhaps the perception of the high pay. Because we all know that today's new pilots aren't getting paid as much as the old timers. I'm also including a link in the description to an article called The UK's Most Attractive Jobs Are Revealed. And they're all in the medical profession. The top five professions women look for in a man are medical, veterinary, legal, teaching, and finance. Women obviously go where the money is, but they also go into those fields because there are men working there in such jobs that are of higher status. Do you really think that women wouldn't pick these types of jobs if men weren't in those fields? But with regards to women being uncompassionate, when I was actually a child in the early 1980s, I was hospitalized after I got a bad concussion that it actually had me seeing double. The second night I was in the hospital, I was woken up by three nurses. Two of these nurses held me down while the third one desperately tried putting the IV needle into my arm. I remember it was the middle of the night. I was sleeping there alone in the hospital after getting hurt. So I was woken up in the middle of the night by these three witches. They didn't explain what they were doing to me. They just grabbed my arms and started to put the needle in. I freaked out so much that I was actually biting them and kicking and screaming. 
I wasn't eating or drinking anything, so they actually needed to get the IV into me, but the way they went about it, I think could have actually been done a whole lot differently. And if I was a young girl, or if my mother was around, then I'm sure that things would have been done different. I now believe they acted the way they did, specifically because my mother wasn't there, and because it was a male. But I don't think that nurses are only bad to males. I saw the way they treated my grandmother when she was in the nursing home as well. They didn't take care of her properly and she was always falling over and hurting herself. Ironically, I remember when I saw her there in person, she never actually fell or had any issues with her balance, so I suspect that they were hurting her. But as the age, you shouldn't really worry about this, because soon enough most of these nursing jobs will start to get taken over by robots. The second link in the description below is to a link to a robot bear nurse called Reba. It helps nurses today lift their patients, but how long before it actually starts doing most of the nursing jobs? In the province of Ontario, 250 nurse positions were cut last year, and more are on their way. Ontario has half the population of California, and double its debt. So the province has to cut down on spending programs as it has too much debt, so it's now starting to let go of government jobs mostly handed out like Halloween candy. Not to worry though, the robots will be coming to provide services for all the ill people in nursing homes. They will steal those nursing jobs and probably the jobs of many of the doctors as well. With regards to the airlines, how long before a cart droid starts serving drinks on an airplane, and all those predator drone pilots in the army could actually start flying commercial jets remotely? The time you need the pilot is mostly at landings and takeoffs. The rest of the time, the autopilot takes over. And in the future, software could actually take off and land planes as well. According to Boeing, 80% of the time, accidents happen because of pilot error. The other 20% of the time, it's faulty weather and bad equipment. You don't have to worry about software hijacking a plane and flying it into a mountain, either. If the pilot jobs disappear, so too will the flight attendant jobs. What about the waitresses and female bartenders that care about their tips first and their customers second? What happens to those types of jobs? The third link in the description is to the Bionic Bar. Soon 007 will be getting his martini shaken not stirred by robots before he enters his self-driving Austin Martin while making love in the back seat while the car drives itself back to his hotel. The third link in the description is to a robot that pours these drinks. And you don't even have to tip it. And ironically, this robot is currently on the cruise ship called Quantum of the Seas, similar to Quantum of Solace. Female nurturing and taking care of men will also disappear in the kitchen. Check out the fourth link to the robotic chef. And then there's the obvious hospitality of prostitutes. If you think that women are going to get pissed off about robots taking their jobs, wait until the robots take their men. Women will have to compete with robots in the bedroom and robots in the boardroom, and many men will probably be laughing their asses off because men are more creative and outside-the-box thinkers. We are better at adopting to a changing world with regards to robotics. Women mimic what other women do, and they often play it safe. They don't take the risks required to get ahead and will suffer greatly in the future. It will be interesting to see what governments will do as robots keep a man's stomach full and his balls empty, something that many women these days don't really know how to do anymore. And as a result, women will lose the power of traditionalism and feminism will fall into the dumpster of history. There also probably won't be many male professionals left in the economy. And those that will be there will probably have little to no use for real women and will probably just avoid them. What about women that work in the hotels as well as the travel and tourism industry? The next link is called Inside the Japanese Hotel Staffed by Robots. You check into your room using a robotic velociraptor. The hotel bit in this video is actually 5 minutes and 40 seconds in, in case you're wondering. The bellhop robot then takes your bags to your room, and you don't actually need a car to get into your room as each room has facial recognition detectors. The only thing that humans do in this hotel is actually clean the rooms. But there's a solution for that as well. Because the sixth link is to a robot maid that does the laundry, polishes the floors, and cleans up the kitchens. A few days ago I shared this link on my personal Facebook page, and half a dozen women actually got upset about it. So what does this mean for a woman trying to land a man in a so-called caring profession? Or possibly becoming a professional in that field herself? It means that all those women out there that have taken degrees will soon find those degrees will be useless because they won't actually help her find a career or a job. And she won't even have met a man in university because there are less and less of those, and she'll basically be burdened with school debt, and she won't even be able to get a job at Starbucks to pay off the interest on her student loans. That's the type of world that we're heading into. Men will still make up the bulk of the programming and IT jobs because of our ability to do math much better. But when it comes to jobs that are social in the service industry where women have done really well up until now, women will suffer in those jobs more than men because robots don't socialize. You don't need human resources managers to hire a robot. Women take jobs to be around professional men to land them for relationships and then basically get a bailout for their debts. They can't do that with the robot. 
and I predict that the economy in the future will shift radically as there are less and less consumers because technology takes more jobs away from humans. I don't believe that women will be able to keep up with it all and could end up being really surprised. And we'll see women saying that robots are misogynistic. Personally, I can't wait for a world to see where the robots care more for the men than they do for the women. And robots don't even have emotions. They're just made of plastic transistors and battery packs. Yet it'll probably be remarkable to see the amount of compassion they will appear to display. As men listening to this, I want you to think about how this will impact your future. If people lose their jobs due to robotics, then real estate will crash in the future as well. Also, a lot of people will probably revolt against technology, especially if it takes away their jobs. In the future, a woman won't be after a man that's a doctor or a lawyer or a pilot. She'll go after a man that has a job, even if that job is part-time. Human labor will be worth less, and money will basically be worth more, especially if that money is cash money outside the system. Today I was reading that the U.S. government wants to phase out the $100 bill because supposedly too many drug dealers and criminals are using cash. So we're now entering uncharted territory. But I do know that a woman can't flash her chest and get a robot to do what she wants it to do. And I believe that women will be hurt more by this new stage of automation, more so than men. Men can still do all the construction jobs in homes, we can do engineering and design for now, as well as about 90% of the tech jobs. But if women are squeezed out of HR and other cushy positions, then they'll probably come looking to take the jobs that men currently have. Not only will a professional male have to worry about gold diggers trying to take his money, but they'll also have to worry about women trying to steal his job as well. But until then, women will just chase pilots, doctors, professors, and professionals with good salaries. Anyways, that's it for today. Thanks again, Ozzy H, for your donation. And as for everyone else out there, please follow me on Twitter or like me on Facebook to get tomorrow's video today. Thanks for taking your daily dose of red pills. And remember, a red pill a day keeps the fembots away. So enjoy the rest of your day, and cheers.